really happy to be here. My name is Dima, and I'm here to talk about Kotlin's game beat or how to create LLMless AI for board games. And uh, a little bit about myself. I work at Trivago. Trivago is a hotel search company, and this is a data-driven company, I would say. We have big loads of data, many models trained on that data, and that gave me quite some knowledge which I, which I can apply elsewhere. So I have a friend whose name is Yura, and he works in Decathlon. And unfortunately, we live in different countries. So he li I live in Germany, he lives in Ukraine, but we are real geeks, board game geeks. We like playing board games. And we spend a lot of tr time trying to find a board game which will fit our need and have a great online version. And we didn't succeed in this. So we got a great idea. Being a nerd that we are, we decided to develop a game for us. But developing it was only part of the problem, because you need friends who will be as geeky as you are to play this with you. Unfortunately, they were not as passionate about the game as we are, so sometimes we end up playing together for multiple people. So what would you do in this case? The obvious solution is to develop artificial friends, right? And yeah, in the era of AI, the obvious solution might be on the top of the minds to use some of the models like OpenAI's GPT or Gemini or anything like this, feed all the rules, also use all the actions, and then start querying it and getting the results. While they have their application, our game is not the use case for that. We decided to leverage Kotlin APIs with libraries which are available there and try to achieve the results simply using Kotlin. Short overview about the game. You play in teams. There are three teams, different roles. Roles are hidden. Number of teammates is hidden. There are different cards to play like attacking cards, defending cards, supporting cards, among them arsenal or role revealing cards. And uh, to develop the bot to effectively play this game, you need to cover quite some cases. In our situation, we have eight models to cover all the functionality of the bot. So let's talk about the first one. Model one is to predict the target to attack. I would say that's the very important part of the game. And if you look at the screenshot, it's pretty easy to know what to do with this guy, right? So he's a teammate, you shouldn't attack the teammate. But what would you do with these ones? The roles are hidden and the goal of the game to be the last team standing. So for this, you will need some prediction, which will be based on their actions. Where should we start from? And as I'm talking about developing the game, let's kind of play a game here. And level one will be data analyst. So now being a data analyst, we should obviously analyze the data. And the good start will be to create Kotlin notebook. So you just go create new file in the drop down, you select it. Then I would suggest by using a magic use keyword, use data frames, which is a very powerful tool and allows you to do many uh, data visualization and exploration. And in another case, I'm just showing how PostgreSQL can be loaded uh, without the um, use magic word. After we have data frame, we can either load our data from the CSV file or also from the database with a relatively simple setup, like using JDBC URL, username and password, composing our query, and just getting the results. This is it. Now we are ready to explore the data. And again, Kotlin notebooks together with uh, data frames give you a lot of advantage comparing to Jupyter notebooks. One of my favorite ones is you can have a nested data frames inside the data frames. You can go back and forth to see the data. You don't need to send uh, several queries with different aggregation just to load more and more data in memory. You can also uh, do, you can read the JSON fields, then explode them, and you will see the neatly uh, structured uh, nested fields, like here on the example. And you can do all in one table, the exploration. So. Let's say we did the exploration. We found out the points, we calculated the points, which might be valuable for uh, predicting the target. And that's what we came up with. Bunch of fields. You can see we were very concise with the naming that we used. Done. Now we can save this to the file, to the database, whatever we want to do with the data, it's prepared. Time to go to the next level, data science. And um, 
before actually telling what we did in the code, I will tell about the model that we decided to pick. It's called random forest. What is the random forest? Let's start with a decision tree. Decision tree, you can think of it as a set of uh, if-else statements. And following the path of uh, yes or no questions, it can lead you to the final result, which is called the leaf. And random forest combines many of those trees. The benefit of the model, it takes um, the whole data set, splits it in random chunks, and creates decision trees for all of them. Also, when using those nodes of yes or no questions, they use a random uh, set of features. That is why it prevents model from overfitting, or at least reduces the chances of it. We used Spark because it has a built-in support for random forest, and this is how you can set up the Spark session. After the Spark session is set up, you will have to do some adjustments in the data. You can load it from a CSV file, which we saved from DataFrame. Unfortunately, Kotlin DataFrame and Spark are not compatible yet, I hope. So you have to do some manual mapping of the types and um, to write some code to connect the logic of your data uh, with the Spark's data frame. After having this, you need to start training the model. And the first step is assembling the features vector. Features are the parameters which will be used for prediction. You just put them all together and create a new column which is called features. We call this this way. And then random forest is in play. We use the classifier because we just need the yes or no prediction, attack or not attack, and um, the label column, which is the actual result, if it was attacked or not, and how it is applied to the features which are assembled on the previous step. Done. So we have kind of two stages. Yet now we are setting the pipeline model with the two stages. You can have many more stages. It depends on how far can you go with this one, but this is a working model already. And you do the fitting. fitting takes time. It can take minutes, it can take hours, depending on the amount of data that you have. But after it's done, the only thing you need to do is to save the model. And this is it. The question is how to use it now. And the obvious step would be to move to another level, which is software engineering. On this slide, I will not stop for a long time, because that's a simple uh, dependency usage of Spark. And um, this is how you can configure Spark. I must say that configuration can be sometimes cumbersome, but this is a working example already, and it can run alongside your app, inside your application. That's what we did. After configuring, you can see um, the file, which is, I would call it, the brain of our bot when it comes to target prediction. What it does, this one line is responsible for loading the model, which we saved from our notebook before. And then leveraging transform method, which actually gets, adds the predictions to the features that we passed. We are converting them to customly created data class, which is called target, and a bit about parameters. There is player name, which is not used in prediction, just for mapping data. Uh, there is a prediction, which is one or zero. So you can already use that one for the predictions, but there is also probability, and I took the probability of true value, which gives you the range from zero to one, and you can decide on your personal threshold. I think we used 0 0.4, if I'm not mistaken, to decide when to attack, when not. Done. The first part is ready. We can already predict the target. I have another example, and it is about predicting the cards which should be discarded. How do you do this? The rule of the game is, in hand, you can have as many cards as active players in the game. Here we have four and seven cards. This example is relatively easy, right? You can just discard the duplicates. But if you have a more complex case where you have to discard, for example, 11 cards of different types, what would you do? And uh, to solve this problem, we use neural network. In a nutshell, neural network is uh, inspired by the brain functionality. So there are like layers of neurons which do computations on the data and in the end provide uh, the output layer with the prediction. So the input layer just takes the features. Hidden layer does some calculations on it, calculating uh, weighted sums of um, the initial value and the bias which is applied to it. And they are all interconnected. There's also a modifier which is applied on each of um, uh, the neuron and we get the output layer with the result. Kotlin DL is a library 
which allows us to do this. So it, has, um, it is a high-level deep learning API in Kotlin, uh, which is inspired by Keras. It uses uh, TensorFlow Java API underneath the hood and very easy to use. This is how we prepare data. Uh, there is a data set which has to be prepared from X and Y, where our X is the same as in Random Forest. You just get the list of features. And Y is the actual labeling column, which is saying if it was discarded or not. For uh, the neural networks, you need to do some preparation for the data, and it is supposed to be somewhere close to the range from minus one to one. That is why we used um, z-score normalization on all the values which are out of the range, and we converted booleans to one zeros, and uh, the percentage columns were just also narrowed down to the one to, uh, zero to one range. That's it. Now we have to prepare the model. And this slide is actually the presentation of that screenshot of neural networks that I showed. You can see we are setting up the layers. First is the input layer. Second and third, unlike on the picture, we have only two layers. You specify the number of neurons you need, the activator, and here the magic happening. And the last one is the output layer, which provides um, us with some output in the um, like a prediction. Then we have to compile this method with using some more things, which I will not dive into it, but we can play with metrics, we can play with losses, and this is um, the intricacies of uh, neural networks and the models. Then we are ready to train it. Again, we have a fit method where we simply uh, send our uh, train data set and we do the fitting. After fitting is done, configuration file should be saved and the weights themselves should be saved with the two functions. And now, again, software development work. Dependencies can be included. If you're using Kotlin notebooks, luckily you can simply, again, benefit from a use magic keyword and do Kotlin-DL and you will have everything loaded there already. And this is another part of our brain. So it is responsible for loading the configuration file and creating the model in the application. Then we do the compilation and load the weights, which were also saved in one of the previous steps. And in the game, everything you need to do afterwards is just use predict softly with all the features that are related to the card. You pass them and you get the result, which looks something like this. You will have to test this on your test data set. So you'll have to divide the training data set with the test data set to see what makes sense, what is the threshold for you. For us, I think it was close to uh, 0.12, but it doesn't make that much sense in this case because all you need to do is sort them out by prediction and discard the most probable cards depending on the amount of cards we need to discard. And I would say this is it. Now we have developed AI bot to play with us. It eliminates uh, the need of uh, chasing our friends and trying to play with them somehow. Bots uh, can be improved. We can iterate over time on them. And um, no LLM used, as you can see. You can use uh, LLMs for other stuff, more important stuff, like you know, generating pictures with twisted hands for the presentations. And the QR code will lead you to the game, so if you want to play it, it's completely free. So you can try out our bots, give the feedback, or just have fun. Thanks, everyone, and don't forget to vote.